dear students in lecture number 24 we discussed about the adaptations in hill stream fishes but today we shall be dealing with one of the important topics that is the grouping of hill stream fishes according to Menon 1954 wherein Menon grouped all those hill stream fishes into six groups and he related the distribution of Himalayan fish to morphological characteristics which enable them to inhabit the torrential streams so as the Menon widely grouped the Himalayan fishes into six groups so it becomes obvious for us to know little bit about the Himalaya and the Himalayan streams this is uh, this very lecture is in continuation to the earlier lecture that is adaptation in hill stream fishes which you can watch by just clicking on the above i button so let us have a little bit of idea little bit of quick recap about the himalayas the himalayas cover 594400 square kilometer and they run about 2500 kilometer from west to east so if we talk about the himalayas if we talk about the himalayas they widely run from the west that is the western side toward the eastern side and this is about 2500 kilometer this stretch is about 2500 kilometer and the whole area of the himalayan himalayas is it is about 594400 square kilometer now in between there is a nanga parbat which is 8126 meter in west and namcha barwa 7756 meter in the east and these two are the mountain peaks of the himalayas now the this very mountain system is bordered in the west by the karakoram mountains to in the northern side that is in the northern side we do have the karakoram mountain range this one and in the east it is it is surrounded by the plateau of tibet so on the eastern side we do have the plateau of tibet and on the western side on the northern side we do have the karakoram mountain range so one thing it is the namcha barwa here namcha barwa is here in the eastern side and nanga parbat nanga parbat is here in the western side of the himalayas so the width from the south to north it varies between 200 to 400 kilometer so when we talk about the width that is that is from this range towards the this range that is from the north to south direction so i shall be using the another pen that is the from north to south from this side to this side that is up to the occupancy of the himalayas it it uh, varies between 200 to 400 kilometer and then one can distinguish four parallel and longitudinal mountain belts of the varying width each having distinct physiographic features and its own geological history so we all know the shivaliks the lesser himalayas then we do have greater himalayas so we do have the shivaliks we do have the lesser himalayas and we do have the greater himalayas we should be knowing that the himalayas are drained by almost 19 major rivers so himalayas are drained by almost 19 major rivers and of which the indus and brahmaputra are longest indus and brahmaputra they are the longest that is the brahmaputra and this is the indus river system so indus river system and the brahmaputra river system they are the longest one and each having a catchment area of about 1,60,000 square kilometer and of the remaining 17 rivers the five belong to the indus river system 
of which Bias and Satluj. So among these 19, so again these two, <coughs> again these two, that is the Bias and Satluj. They have the total catchment area of about 80,000. That is total catchment area of about 80,000. And the nine and other nine, if we talk about the other nine, that is the Ganga, Yamuna, Ram Ganga, Kali Sharda, Karnali, Rapti, Gandak, Bagmati, Kosi, they belong to the Ganga river system and they drain nearly 1 lakh, 1 lakh 50,000 square kilometers. So 1 lakh 50,000 square kilometers of the area is drained by the Ganga system, that is the Ganga river system. And Ganga have five sources, source rivers, that is Bhagirathi, that is Bhagirathi, Mandakini, Alaknanda, Dholi Ganga and Pindar. And the number of the rivers and number of the rivers enter from within India and from Bhutan. So many of the rivers they enter India from the Bhutan as well. The Brahmaputra is known as the Yarlung, Zangbo, Ziang. So this very Brahmaputra is known as a river in India by the name of Brahmaputra. But it is known as Yarlung, Zangpo, Ziang or Sangpo in China. It is commonly known as Sangpo. <coughs> Sangpo in China or Yarlung Zangbo Jiang. It is also known as Yarlung Zangbo Jiang or Sangpo in China. But in India, it is known as Brahmaputra. Brahmaputra. And it has the catchment of about 1,10,000 square kilometers. And most of the rivers flow in the deep valleys until they exit the mountains. The uh, fish species which are distributed in the Himalayan streams. They particularly depend upon many factors. And those very factors are the rate of the flow of the water, nature and substratum, water temperature and availability of the food. So all these very factors, that is the rate of the flow of the water, nature and substratum, water temperature and availability of the food. These are the factors which mark the presence or absence of the particular species uh, of the species in these very Himalayan streams. So if we talk about the torrential streams, the Sagal, Sagal, he was one of the great researchers in fisheries, that is the Sagal 1988. He identified several zones on the basis of the dominant fish species. So he divided the waters of the streams on the basis of the presence of the certain species. So he particularly divided a stream into headwater zone, headwater zone, large stream zone and the slow meandering zone that is the headwater which is inhabited by the rheophilic species so the first first category that is the are the first phase of the river that is the headwater it means that those very species which are which love the flow of the water that is which are found in the fast flowing water they live in this very headwater zone such as loaches we do have the nemacylus gracialis we do have the nemacylus um, stolixi and then we do have the glyptosternum then we do have the large stream zone it is formed by the joining of the headwater streams so when these very headwater streams join they they form the large stream zone so this very zone is inhabited by some other kind of the fishes such as Dipticus. We do have the Dipticus maculatus and we do have the Nemacylus here again. Then we do have the third phase or the third part of the um, stream that is the slow moving or meandering zone. So I was telling you about the this is the fast flowing zone that is what I am going to show you by the blue uh, this very pan. So this very headwater that it is ha it is having a fast flowing uh, zone and then where these very headwaters 
uh, merge we call it as the large stream zone and then we do have the we do have the meandering zone where the rivers meander and their rate of the flow slows down that is why we do have the slow moving meandering zone here and it is inhabited by the large number of the cold and urethermal urethermal species we do have the barrelius we do have the tor species we do have the catfishes we do have the hemalopterid fishes such as uh, um, homaloptera and we do have the snake heads such as channa uh, or channa punctatus channa gachua then coming on today's um, topic that is the grouping of the hill stream fishes by menon so menon who particularly worked on the fishes of the hill streams and particularly of the himalayan hill streams Menon in 1954 he related the distribution of the himalayan fish to the morphological characteristics which enable them to inhabit the torrential streams so what was the what was the what was in the mind of the menon he particularly divided the fishes into six groups but on the basis of their morphological characteristics that is based on the morphology of the fishes he divided fishes into six groups and those are the fishes belonging to the hill streams so the first group he he categorized the first group in which the fish dwelling in the shallow clear cold water in the foothills without any striking modification now this is important herein the fishes they dwell in shallow clear cold water in the foothills without striking modification that is there is no striking modification to the current of the water and herein you will find you will find some of the fishes mostly cylindrical um, in shape and such as we do have the labio labio many of the many of the fishes of the species of the labio they are warm water but some of the species of labio they are well adapted to the hill streams labio we do have the tor we do have the barrelius we do have the punctatus we do the silurus that is the catfishes bagidius catfish batasio then gagata then chia so we do have the labio we do have the tor species we do have the barrelius species we do have the punctatus species we do have the silurus we do have the batasio so these very fishes they dwell in shallow clear cold waters without any striking modification modification in terms of the body in order to adapt to the hill stream so no such modification is found in group number 1 now group number 2 fish inhabiting the bottom water layers in deep fast current now here one thing is important one thing which manen according to the manen he said that these very fishes they inhabit the bottom water layers in deep fast current but when we see these very fishes we will find that the powerful musculature cylindrical bodies they have the powerful musculature to cope up with the fast flowing current such as we do have the shelthorax species such as plagiostoma shelthorax curvy fronds we do we do have the semiplotus we do have the crossochylus we do have the tor we do have the we do have the we do have the um, the trouts as well we do have the trouts that the exotic trouts so these group 2 fishes they inhabit the bottom water layers in deep fast current having the powerful muscular cylindrical bodies powerful muscular cylindrical bodies then group number 3 now um, just to keep in mind that we categorize these very fishes as the fishes having the burrowing habit so fishes sheltering among pebbles now these are the fishes which shelter among pebbles and stones so that they can avoid the strong water current now as i was telling you that we can say that they do have the burrowing habit they belong to this group and they bury themselves in sand and pebbles to escape the force of the fast flowing rivers 
so in order to escape the fast flowing river they bury themselves among the pebbles they shelter among themselves themselves among pebbles and stones and they usually bury themselves uh, in the sand and pebbles so we do have the examples in the case such as we do have the silorhynchus we do have the scissor we do have the crassochylus diplochylus the fishes which belong to this very group now moving on to the group 4 these fishes they shelter among pebbles and shingles in the shallow waters with special attachment devices so there are certain attachment devices which enable them to attach to the substrate and they belong to the shallow waters we do have the examples in the form of the loaches loaches such as nemechylus we do have the we do have the nemechylus we do have the botia um botia nemechylus we do have the botia then we do have the um aborichthys we do have the acanthopthalamus we do have the olira then then uh, many uh, other such as shellthrax niger can be categorized in this group as well but most importantly loaches such as nemechylus botia and amblyceps they are the important one then group number 5 this is uh, this is a uh, this is a group wherein they are exposed uh, they are um, they cling to the exposed surfaces of the bare rocks that is they have to face a greater force of the water than the fishes of the group 4 so group 4 fishes do not have to face the greater force of the water but the group 5 fishes have to face the uh, greater force of the water that is why they do have the adhesive organs now you will find the adhesive organs here on the ventral surface such as we do have the um, adhesive organs on the ventral side just in the thoracic region in the, in, in gyra and we do have the th uh, we do have the adhesive organs in the cleptothorax as well then we do have the adhesive organs in the case of the glyptosternon as well and then lugivia luguvia is also the example where in these very fishes have the have formed disc like attachment organs on the ventral surface which help them to attach themselves to the rocks so as they can they can face the greater force of the water than the fishes of the group 4 then uh, coming on to the uh, group 6 so fishes um, these very fishes they have to face a greater force of the flowing water than that of the group 5 so more force than that of the group 5 so these very fishes these cling to the exposed surfaces of the bare rocks in fast current and mostly they are the limpet shaped body this is the important characteristic features of the group 4 the limpet shaped bodies the limpet is actually a muscle which is which is somewhat triangular which attaches itself to the substrate and that is why we call it the limpet shaped bodies which helps them that is the that is the triangular um, shaped which helps them to um, for the attachment and the uh, they have the special specially uh, modified uh, mouth gills and fins uh, according to the habitat so the gills mouth body which is limpet shaped that is adapted um, and that is modified to live in the hill stream with the with uh, to face the greater force of the flowing water and the limpet shaped body of these very fishes helps them to attach and adhere to the stones in the strong water currents and we have the examples such as balitora we do have examples such as balitora we do have the examples such as um, aristhistoids aristhistoids we do example in the uh, in the form of pseudoachinus we do example in the form exostoma we do have example in the form form of the um, hemaloptera so uh, balitora uh, aristhistoids uh, pseudoachinus exostoma hemaloptera these are the examples of the fishes which belong to the group 6 and they have to face a greater force of the flowing water than that of the group 5 and there they have the highly modified according to the hill streams by having the limpet shaped body and uh, having having the modifications in the mouth gills and the fins so that they can adapt to these very fast flowing rivers so 
thank you for watching that's all for today uh, that is a grouping of the uh, hill stream features according to the man in 1954 next we shall be talking about the distribution and origin of the hill stream features thank you thank you very much keep watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe and like my channel bio learnia